We are elected to hear it first, not to read it in the Telegraph, and certainly not a WMS is satisfactory on such an important matter. I'm very sorry that the sequencing uh, that we chose was not to your satisfaction. That is totally not acceptable. Who do you think you're speaking to, Secretary of State? I am the defender of this House and these benches on both sides. I am not going to be spoken to by a Secretary of State who is absolutely not accepting my ruling. Before we begin the urgent question, I know that it is highly regrettable that the government decided not to offer an oral statement on this matter yesterday. Yeah. Given the importance of this announcement, on such matters, full engagement with Parliament and its committees is essential. Before I call the Chair, I will remind the government we are elected to hear it first, not to read it in the Telegraph, and certainly not a WMS is satisfactory on such an important matter. Hence, that I would always say, I am now going to call the Chair of the European Scrutiny Committee to ask the urgent question. Sir William Cash. Uh, yeah. Madam Speaker, uh, will the Secretary of State make a statement regarding the question of her failure to come <coughs> to the House before she made the written ministerial statement and the press article today in the Daily Telegraph? Uh, thank, you, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'm very sorry that the sequencing uh, that we chose was not to your satisfaction. I was. Uh, <laughs> order, 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 order. order. That is totally not acceptable. No. Who do you think you're speaking to, Secretary of State? I don't want. I think we need to understand each other. I am the defender of this House and these benches on both sides. I am not going to be spoken to by a Secretary of State who is absolutely not accepting my ruling. Take it with good grace and accept it that members should hear it first, not a WMS or what you decide. These members have been elected by their constituents and they have the right to hear it first. And it is time this government recognised we're all elected, we're all members of Parliament, and use the correct manners. Secretary of State. Mr Speaker, I apologise. What I was trying to say was that I'm very sorry that I did not meet the standards uh, which you expect of uh, Secretaries of State, forgive my language. But um, what I have been trying to do is make sure that I provide as much clarity as possible. So I am actually very pleased to be coming to the House uh, to speak. <laughs> I'm very pleased to be coming to the House to speak uh, on this issue. I've, uh, I have um, written, a, uh, written ministerial statements to explain that yesterday we tabled an amendment to the retained EU law bill that amends the operation of the sunset in clause one of the bill. This is a technical change. It introduces a schedule to the bill of retained EU law that will be revoked on 31st of December 2023. The schedule includes around 600 pieces of legislation provided by nearly all departments and spans a huge number of policy areas. This is in response to concerns raised in this House and will provide the legal clarity and certainty that has been called for. I would like to reassure my honourable friend that the 600 pieces in the schedule are not the limits of our ambition, neither the beginning nor the end, but actually over the past year, as Whitehall departments have been working hard to identify retained EU law to preserve, reform or revoke, it has become clear that time constraints have led to the programme becoming more about preserving EU laws than prioritising meaningful reform. Yeah. That is why we are proposing a new approach. And Mr Speaker, had I known the intense excitement that the House would have had about this issue, I would have come running, <laughs> uh, running to make sure that these technical details um, could be uh, investigated by all and sundry. But we are proposing a new approach, Mr Speaker, one that will ensure ministers and officials are enabled to focus more on reforming rule and doing that faster. I'm pleased to say that the government has already reformed or revoked over a thousand pieces of rule. In addition to the list of around 600 revocations in the schedule to the retained EU law bill, the Financial Services and Markets Bill and the Procurement Bill will repeal around 500 further pieces of rule, meaning we will have repealed not 600 but actually more than 2,000 pieces of rule by the end of the year. We are committed to lightening the regulatory burden on businesses and helping to spur economic growth, and our Edinburgh reforms of UK financial services include over 30 regulatory reforms to unlock investment and boost growth in towns and cities across the UK. 
Our regulatory reform announcement yesterday set out a long-term plan to reform UK regulation over the coming months as a down payment on that commitment. We announced changes that will reduce disproportionate EU-derived reporting requirements that could save businesses around a billion pounds a year. That will just be the first in a series of announcements the government will be making uh, on reforming regulation to drive growth. And in addition to the schedule, the powers in the bill will still enable us to revoke, replace and reform any outdated EU laws that remain on our statute book by 2026. Mr Speaker, this new approach will provide this space for longer term and more ambitious reforms. It will also, uh, members of this House, I no doubt will be pleased to hear, mean fewer statutory instruments will be required to preserve EU laws that are deemed appropriate to maintain. I again would like to reassure my honourable friend that we will still fully take back control of our laws and end supremacy and the special status of retained EU law by the end of 2023. This will ensure we are ending the shadow statute book and inappropriate entrenchment of EU law concepts in domestic statute.